Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Eddie Marcus here. I got a message that I've been given, and I want to share it with you. If Jesus was respected as much as Santa Claus, maybe society could be better. That's the truth. People know Santa. Sometimes they see it coming. But when it comes to Jesus, we've waited our entire life. Santa tries to put on a costume and tries to trick the people. But Jesus, well, never comes. We live and maybe some good news will come our way. You can bet that pain and suffering is going to come. And the con game usually comes with it. The things I'm going to say to you now will offend you. Many of you. Well, maybe it will. But I'm going to share with you my experience. God is the power responsible for all existence. We as humans can identify, yet we are well aware we had nothing to do with its existence. Yet, we have recognized that every resource necessary to do or create anything or any kind of life we choose is available. That good, that is good, that is God looking out for our interest, our will. And in spite of all that, gave us choice to choose the path that we want. Having received miracles, which are things that happen for me, that I or no other human could do. So after that, I became an advocate for God in preaching. Now, members of the Christianity, that organization, were taught that God answers prayers. So they would give me messages requesting that I take it to God, asking for aid in their stead. Now, the message sent back, because God does answer, was the power to answer your prayers are in your own hand. Everything is available for humans to do their will. Resources are available for food, clothing, and shelter, and education, and health care, transportation, infrastructure, a career, and access to anything that is created by the hands of man. And being satisfied, it brings peace and prosperity and freedom and joy and happiness and give you an opportunity to live your dreams. This is the message of the story of Jesus. This is the way of living, creating and causing love and happiness. But there is another way. Some humans put themselves above others, creating man's rule of haves and have-nots, of pain and suffering, of crime and violence and uh, hatred and racism, bigotry, lies, and terror and war. You're quite familiar with everything I've just said here. Christianity and other religions, if I might call it that, has nothing to do with the liberation of mankind. Liberation is power from God to the hearts of those that will receive it. Many claim it, but they just don't have the evidence. The evidence will forever tie the hands of those under the authority of God to social and economic change for all people. That's what being connected to God will do. Or they will constantly be murdered as Gandhi and King and Malcolm X and so many others. Today, today the world is under the authority of Satan. It's under the authority of evil. A lot of good stuff is happening, but not to the extent to be used as evidence of your connection with God. 
Now, I've said that, and I'm going to see if I can wrap it up, to, and just in case you didn't get what I'm saying. The message that I have been given is what I rely on. I used to read the Bible, and I've read it. I know probably everything that's in it. You know, I know this, and I might not be able to recall it like that, just like many of you read the scriptures. But my relationship with God had nothing to do with that. My relationship with God had to do with God revealing and exposing the power of God to me in such a way that I knew it was God because nobody else could do it. No human being on faith earth could do it, as far as I know. It just is impossible. So these were miracles. It happened more than once. So I know the God. And so that's why I talk about God. I advocate for God. But I tell you what God tells me. I don't tell you what God told somebody else and then pass it along. In other words, I used to tell you what was in the scripture. But I noticed what was going on. It didn't mean a thing. All of the evil that you could ever imagine in the world goes on in the world. And all of the religions can mean whatever they do mean to the people. But what does it mean to God? Nothing. Why I say that? Because the pain and suffering that we go through is of our own creation. And that's our choice. So nobody mad with you. You might be mad with yourself. But at the same time, it has been prepared that you could live as I described it a moment ago. In, like it's paradise or heaven. But this is a choice you have to make. In the midst of all this hell, you have to make that choice. And making that choice means you got the evidence to prove it. Sitting up here talking about you're a good person, going to church, paying the tire, trying to buy favors from God through giving these uh, prosperity preachers your money don't mean nothing. Saying you believe the Bible says you can lay your hands on the sick and they will recover. You believe in all that stuff. You ain't laying hands on no sick and recovering. So all of that don't mean a dead blessed thing. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm just saying it don't mean a dead blessed thing as far as the evidence that you depict right here about your relationship with God. You just ain't got it. It ain't real. You're faking it. You're pretending. Just like in America, all those people with, with God and all that, you know, prophecies and all that got behind Donald Trump, one of the lionest people, evil people. I'm not saying he's the only one, but he's one of the biggest one in America as far as what he was trying to do to American people. Yet these Christian people again, what, fundamentals and evangelicals, they mostly white. And they done brought God out of heaven to, pro to protect this man, to take the rest of this here race and put them on back in the bondage again. This is sick. This is pure D sickness. But this is sad. Tomorrow, many of you will be in church. If you don't, you have your televisions on and thousands of you will be sitting up there talking about mega church, talking about God and all this pain and suffering going around us every day. You don't even have any idea how it's, how we as people of God are supposed to be living. We don't supposed to be walking around here. We, first of all, if you're going to live as though you're in heaven or in paradise, you don't use money. Money is a tool of the opposite. Money is a tool that's used to divide and make us say some is better and some are not based upon the amount of money you got. That puts you in the hands of other men and how you can, how they can control and manipulate you. It has nothing to do with God. But once you, and we all been there because that's what we're to introduced to. But once God comes into your life, you move. You, you, you rise up above that. And you have a mission. Your mission is to change the world from this. Get rid of that money. Get rid of this lying, cheating, stealing, and hatred, and racism, and bigotry, and all that kind of stuff. Get rid of this race stuff. How do you do it? By lifting up love. Now, what's going to happen? Does the world going to just receive that because you do it? Hey, don't worry about it. You just do it because that's you. In the history, the evidence is that those who do that get killed. The, the evil people will murder them. Get you out of the way. Get me out of the way. And why? So they can continue their hell. And that's fine with those who are in that relationship with God. In fact, they're waiting on it. They're wondering why it takes so long. They're tired of this hell. They want to fix this stuff. Now, who is they? The ones that are out there doing it. But right now, it just ain't good enough. I just want to tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, you're missing the mark. And don't think you're tricking God. You might be tricking your neighbor. You're not even tricking them. In fact, you're not even tricking yourselves. You know you're not a lover. You know good when you turn your back on your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, and your cousin, let alone the people down the street. I just wanted to share that with you just to make you think for a minute. Until next time, Eddie Marcus saying goodbye for now.